I hope that this meeting will uh, be a meeting of, of solidarity with Ukraine and that the European Union stands united against the Russian aggression against Ukraine. Uh, I hope that we will be able to take a common responsibility for the people who flee under, away from the Russian aggression. Um, it's a little bit early to say how many people will flee because it's dependent on the situation. Uh, I, see, I saw that uh, the UN said that about 368,000 already fled. Uh, and, I, and that's the best number I have uh, at this stage. And of course, I want to urge all the countries in the European Union to take their responsibility in this crisis. And there's been certain countries that have been reluctant to be a, a part of the migration pact. And uh, there are certain countries that have been reluctant to have a solidarity mechanism within the EU. And I think that this situation points out the importance of such a mechanism and such a pact. Are you hopeful that this situation will uh, unlock the blockage of the migration reform policy? policy reform, sorry. I hope so, but uh, but but um, uh, future will tell. Uh, but but I mean, some countries now have has been who are in the front line or are, are bordering to Ukraine has also been some of the countries who have has, has blocked uh, the migration pact. And hopefully this, this sad situation uh, makes uh, more countries realize the need for common solidarity within the Union. What are the very, very concrete questions you're going to talk about today? Because we just heard that, for instance, the German rail company is sending trains. What are very concrete steps you need to address? Uh, that depends on the needs for the, for, from Ukraine and from the, the, the bordering countries of Ukraine. Uh, I think all countries of the EU has to put up, put up with the, the, the things needed from those countries. And if it's, it's trade and someone has trains, of course they will provide them. I mean, Sweden has provided tents and, and water supply and firefighters, and we are prepared to meet up the demands from Ukraine and the bordering countries to help uh, uh, tackle the refugee situation. Are you, are you touching the Ukrainian authority? Oh, sorry, there was two. This is the last, last one and then I yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I hope so. Through the different mechanisms. Are you in favor of triggering the 2001 protection directive? Temporary uh, protection directive? Do you mean with, with mass. Uh, uh, I, mean, I, we, we, I think that that could be an option. I'm not, not against trying that option, but you also have to to remember that that isn't a magic wand. It's still uh, voluntarily where all the country pledges. I think that to tackle this kind of situation, we need a, a binding judicial uh, rules in the EU. Uh, solidarity that is bound by, by real decision and not just voluntary. Minister, will this today some kind of decisions or this is just discussion? We'll, uh, that, that, that question has to be for the French presidency. Uh, we, we'll see. I think that the, the main thing here is to draw conclusions of the debate because we meet again on, on Thursday here in, in Brussels. So, of course, even if there aren't any concrete uh, decisions today, we will be able to take those decisions on Thursday. But I hope there will be conclusions to, to, to step forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.